The Verdict, a sidebar production, hosted by Kent Myers and Mick Cornett. As a part of its traditional and continuing commitment to public and community service, Crow and Dunleavy sponsors The Verdict. Also sponsored by Delta Dental, Oklahoma Lawyers for Children, and C.H. Guernsey and Company. Each week on The Verdict, we present an objective discussion of contemporary and legal issues, topical issues that will affect Oklahomans in their daily lives. The Verdict, a sidebar production. And welcome to The Verdict. I'm Mick Cornett, and I am joined, as always, by one of Oklahoma's top legal experts, Kent Myers. Kent, today, um, similar topic to what we've been discussing, but at the same time, a little bit different direction. Yes, it is a different focus. Uh, in several shows in the past, we've talked about children that are abused, deprived, neglected, and uh, to some extent, that may impact what we talk about today, but basically, the focus is different. We are focusing today on kids that are at risk, kids that are in trouble or about to be in trouble, either from a standpoint of conduct or from a standpoint of academics or perhaps just socializing, getting along. And we've got with us today, and frankly, we're going to do two shows this week and next week on this same topic. This week, we're going to be talking with two people who are very well educated, uh, experienced, and uh, prepared to talk to us about why kids today are going to schools that have metal detectors have drug sniffing dogs, have police officers roaming the, uh, roaming the halls. And for many of us, that's kind of a new development. We, we didn't go to school that way, and we're not quite sure why. We're going to be talking about that and trying to focus on why that is the case today. Well, let's get to it. Today, we'll learn more about working with adolescents, some tough answers and some tough questions. You're watching The Verdict with Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. The Verdict is pleased to have as a sponsor C.H. Guernsey & Company, providing architectural and engineering services to clients throughout the U.S. and around the world. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leaving it fourth and seven on the Tiger 46-yard line. Seconds on the clock, the Tigers have no choice but to go. Wiggins had to do the kicking. Here's the snap. And the kick is away. All children deserve a life of hope and love. But sometimes they experience a life of pain, neglect, and abuse. When that happens, each child deserves all of the quality assistance and representation that can be offered in our legal system. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children has over 350 of the best attorneys and volunteers in Oklahoma County who donate their time and services to represent children. For more information, call 405-23-CHILD. Oklahoma Lawyers for Children helping to bring hope and love back to the lives of abused children. American Express Tax and Business Services. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. American Express Tax and Business Services. In Oklahoma City, the phone number is 405-843-5311. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with Kent Myers is going to introduce our guests. We are really pleased today to have uh, Oklahoma's version not of the dream, dream team, but the Doan team. <laughs> Uh, husband and wife combination uh, that are resident uh, experts in dealing with tough problems with adolescents. And those tough problems a lot of, have, a lot of times have tough uh, solutions. 
Dr. Robert Doan across the table from me is a tenured professor of psychology at the University of Central Oklahoma and has been at the university for some 17 years. Is a graduate of Oklahoma State University, Washington State University, and University of Central Oklahoma. He's a therapist. He has been the staff psychologist at the Union City Adolescent Facility, a state uh, facility for young people in Union City. He's an author, speaker, recognized expert both locally and, and nationally on adolescent problems. Dr. Doan, thank you for joining us here on The Verdict. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. On my right is uh, Lisa Forster Doan. Uh, Lisa is a graduate of TCU and the University of Central Oklahoma, has her master's in community counseling, is a licensed behavioral practitioner uh, in Oklahoma, and is, serves uh, on the board of the uh, state agency that licenses LBPs, I understand. Uh, she's currently working in the Oklahoma City public school system as a counselor, but has also worked in Cleveland County agencies. Uh, working with uh, troubled youths, uh, at-risk kids, and uh, kids in general. Uh, Lisa, thank you for joining us. We're pleased to have you. Uh, Lisa, let me ask you. Uh, Mick and I went to a high school, I belonged before Mick, uh, <laughs> when we didn't have, uh, didn't have the unrest and violence in the schools then uh, that we do now, at least they took it outside in a parking lot or something. Mm -hmm. But in any event, it seems like there's a lot more unrest and violence in our schools today. <clears throat> is that a correct perception? Uh, and, and why is that so? Uh, yes, it is. And actually, what, we're, what I'm even seeing and, uh, is that the females are more aggressive and fighting more and as much as some of the males. And uh, gosh, where do you start uh, as to why? And um, it's certainly not the same world that uh, I grew up in. Um, you talk about not just in the school, but what they what they come, you know, where they're coming from at home, and bringing it to school, and the gangs, the gang activities that are occurring outside, and they bring it into the school, and want to take care of it at school. It's no matter, no longer, let's take care of it after school. It's let's take care of it right now. Well, you know, most of the attention goes to the kids who who. who have the worst behavior, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the crimes that are committed in our schools. So we know the <clears throat> worst kids seem worse, if, if I can use that term. Um, are the good kids uh, not as good as they were, uh, as Kent mentioned, when he and I were growing up? I mean, is it across the board? Is Probably, yes, I would say so. What's causing this? What's, what, what do you attribute it to? I think it's, um, in general, the it's a different world. Um, you know, we have more parents that are both working. When the kids go home, uh, they're home by themselves longer. The latch key. The kid. latch key kid. Um, we have a lot. A lot of the population that I work with, uh, there's only one parent in the home. A lot more divorce. I know when I personally went to school, there were very few people that came from divorced families. Um, my family being one of them, I felt very excluded because I was one of the few. Now it is so common that it's rare to find um, families that are still together um, after so many years. And I think, you know, that certainly has something to do with it. Dr. No, or Rob, uh, how do you see it? Well, I think we have an increased number of. Uh, of adolescents and younger people that are feeling uh, somehow alienated or, or disenfranchised from the culture in general. Uh, we were talking prior to the show about music, and if you just listen to their music that they're writing today, we have a bunch of very, very upset and angry kids. Um, it's almost like they're saying uh, they don't like the world that we've handed them. Um, one of my favorite therapists is a New Zealand therapist by the name of David Epstein, and he said anytime you see extreme adolescent behavior, you can be pretty sure the adolescent is <clears throat> protesting something. And in fact, I've asked a lot of the kids I work with, what are they protesting? And they they have very quick and ready answers. Um, What's typical? Yeah. Um, they feel extremely misunderstood. Um, they don't feel like that they have uh, much latitude to be different. Um, than what we consider kind of mainstream, normal. Um, 
as adolescents down through time have said they feel the adult world is very hypocritical, double standards. Uh, and they're also uh, quite frightened. Um, I know when I was working at Union City right after 9-11, many of these young men were very, very frightened that, that um, they were going to die and that they would be on the front line tomorrow. You know, that they would get drafted and they would... And uh, I think they live in a world that's much uh, riper with uncertainty. And I think it's left them a bit at sea <clears throat> and confused. Lisa, let me ask you, facing this as you do every day or, or regularly in the Oklahoma City school system, are the uh, Oklahoma schools equipped to handle this kind of uh, change? No, most schools actually aren't, uh, and that's not to their fault, uh, really. They try. There's a lot of schools that try, try to set up um, what's needed. But um, when you've got 30 people in a class and um, principals that, you know, have to deal with, you know, the larger the school system sometimes, the harder it is for the school to, to try to help or deal with that situation. You set down your rules and then you get in a bind um, with some of these rules and you have to do them when really the kid maybe doesn't need to be expelled but because of the rule has to and it's just you know what what can you do I mean the school system is in a real bind because one they're underfunded which we all know that in the state of Oklahoma um, and not having enough um, counselors on staff if they have enough even if they have counselors that are on staff that are trained um, with the right counseling background I'll, you know I know they're trained or they wouldn't have the job but not very few not very many of them are licensed and so where do the kids go uh, when they need somebody and let me interject something yeah. there most school counselors uh, and this isn't to uh, demean them in any way are not trained in what we would call at-risk or crisis counseling they're <coughs> primarily trained in vocational counseling scheduling and uh, college placement um, and they're trained that way through our educational institutions to, to provide that kind of service, which is a very needed service, one we really need for kids in our schools. But th their training is not particularly in what to do with a, a, a kid that's going to commit, wants to commit suicide or who's going to be violent. And um, unfortunately, in most of our schools, we do not have um, people with 60-hour master's programs who are licensed, who are, who are trained in, in psychotherapy. And so our, our kids don't have that available in the schools for the most part. There are exceptions, but for the most part, I think that would be accurate. Let me jump in here and get us to our first break. We're visiting with Dr. Robert Doan and Lisa Forster Doan. We're discussing the issue of working with troubled adolescents. You're watching The Verdict. are so pleased to congratulate Crow and Dunleavy for their support of the arts and culture in our community and the whole state of Oklahoma. Particularly, we are pleased that they have given us the opportunity to promote the Arts Power campaign on the television show so that we may bring art and music teachers back to our elementary schools all over the state of Oklahoma. Happy anniversary, Crow Dunleavy. We are proud of you. We are C.H. Guernsey and Company. We provide engineering, architecture, and consulting services to clients across the nation and around the world. Our corporate headquarters are located in Oklahoma City, and we have branch offices across the country, including Tulsa. We have provided quality service to clients for nearly 75 years. At Guernsey, we believe in quality work and unconditional client satisfaction. To learn more about C.H. Guernsey and Company, log on to our website at chguernsey.com. St. Gregory's University has been changing the lives of people like me for 125 years. Affordable, private Catholic education, balanced with dedication to community and service, makes St. Gregory special. We're extremely proud of our students' outstanding academic achievements and our nationally ranked athletic teams. It's when you help a student build a future of balance, integrity, and service that you change a life forever. St. Gregory's, a community for life.
Mick Cornett, Kent Myers, back on The Verdict. We're talking today to Lisa Forster Doan and Dr. Robert Doan about a variety of issues dealing with adolescence and behavior. Kent, where do we go from here? Well, the first thing I want to do is correct the record. I made a misstatement and uh, one of many in, in a given show, <laughs> but uh, I said that uh, Lisa was with the Oklahoma City School District. It's actually the Crooked Oak School District, and to all the roughnecks at Crooked Oak, I apologize. <laughs> uh, but, Lisa, uh, what can a school do in a school setting to do away with the need for metal detectors, drug tests, anti-bullying laws, that sort of thing that seem to be prevalent today? Well, they, uh, I think one of the most important things they could do is try to, one, educate their staff sometimes with uh, the, ty the type of kid we're dealing with today, try to help the staff understand uh, more about where these kids are, are living now, what sort of a world they come from, and what world they're bringing into class. Um, again, it's hard for a teacher when you've got large class sizes to, to, to get to know your kids individually. It's, it's almost impossible, although they, they do the best that they can. Um, having people around the kids that try to, you know, that can understand more um, and have the time more to just understand when they're going off that they need some space and a place to go, whether that be the counselor's office or the principal's office, to have uh, a cooling off period. A lot of the kids that I work with, it's understood that they've got to go someplace and, and cool off. Um, and, and, you know, they're able to do that. And, and not always does it work. I mean, the kids are going to be teenagers and um, blow it sometimes. Yeah. Um, Rob, let me ask you, uh, getting away from what the school can or should be able to do, what can or should be done at home to try to uh, assist in the, this problem? Uh, I'd like to answer that, that question this way. I was down at, at Union City, the juvenile facility, for two years and dealing with 80 young men between ages of 13 and 18 that were all convicted felons. And uh, my job was to engage them and try to help them therapeutically. And what I found, and I was a little surprised actually, that the more that I treated these young people with respect and compassion, the easier my job was in working with them. Uh, we had settings down there, that there where there'd never been a behavioral incident. There'd never had to be a guard called. And it was usually uh, the people were treating the young men with respect. So I would say at the school, the family, and at the cultural level, what we need to do is learn to interact with these, these young men and women in ways that don't push their buttons. I didn't, I'm not implying to be permissive, but to treat them with respect and compassion. And you get a much different response from them than if you are, are telling them what to do, actively trying to change them, or insinuating that they're um, all messed up in some way. They usually respond to that very defensively. And they'll be the first ones to tell you exactly who's not respecting them whether it be their own peers or the adult world. Well, let me ask either of you, whichever one wants to respond to it. There's a, adolescence is a time of life uh, that is a time, as I understand it, but I need you to tell me, is a time of challenging, of uh, pushing limits. Just how much of what we're seeing today is normal adolescent behavior to be expected of, of uh, young people at this age, and how much of it is not normal adolescent behavior? Well, I think the adolescent's job, if we just state it generally in terms of human development, is yes. to figure out who they are. And that's to figure out who they are separate from parents and to some extent culture, because we're each unique individuals. Now, let me, I don't want to, I'm interrupting, but I want you to continue. We're talking about the adolescents, whether they're adolescent, whether they're a troublemaker or a, right. or a model citizen. Right. All adolescents, I think, go through a period of questioning and seeking and, and trying to find role identity. What happens a lot of the time in, in this somewhat normal quest for role identity yeah. is it gets treated with lack of understanding and disrespect, and then we have this escalation. You, you, you touched earlier on the media. I think, you, actually, you talked about rock music. And, and is it reflective of, of the, the psyche of America's youth, or is it leading them down the path that might be self-destructive and movies and television and all that, that entire picture? Well, yeah, I, I sure don't hold myself up as an expert on that. Uh, being a musician myself a little bit, as we talked before the show, I've always thought that, that the music of the young people was very reflective of the culture. 
and that if you if you really listen to it you can learn some things i listened to an hour of rap music recently in my car driving back with with two or three young men from union city and they're very surprised that i would listen to an hour of rap <laughs> and they asked me why and i said because i was trying to learn something by the lyrics and he said did you learn anything and i said yes you're very very angry and they said you got it so I, I've, I've always felt it's, it's reflective of what's going on in the culture, whether it's Myra, Bob Dylan, or Elvis whoever. Elvis Presley. They're, they're, they're spokesmen for some of the things that are going on at the cultural level. That's just a belief. That's not truth. We hear, we hear discussion about profiling, and, uh, and usually in a pejorative sense. But is there any kind of general non-pejorative profile that we could draw of, a, of an at-risk kid or a kid in trouble or about to be in trouble? Are there factors we could look at to say the probabilities are this, this child is going to be in trouble? <clears throat> well, at risk can mean a lot of things. Yes. Um, at risk, um, of course, it could be their grades are dropping, they're at risk for failing. Uh, teachers pick up on that. Teachers pick up on their behaviors in class. If a student has been very active in class and all of a sudden, you know, has become very introverted and not talking a lot of times the teachers will come and talk to me about that so there, there's something going on with the student um, their behavior changes that's a that's a flag you can look for for at risk um, gosh it's it's, it's you know watch how they're reacting with their friends if their friends change if the way they're talking to their friends change the way they talk to the teacher changes if they if they're you know, disrespectful, and they've never done that before. You know, something is going on. They're at risk for something. You know, mm -hmm. check into what it is. Um, now, I suppose there's a, I, I hesitate to say this, but I suppose there's a normal amount of, of disrespect that's going to come from an adolescent that is challenging <clears throat> authority. Yes. And vice versa. Yes. Yeah. And how do you, how do you distinguish? How do you know when the, the line has been crossed and the child is at risk? Well, the, the profile that you mentioned, uh, the, the FBI has done a profile. And these kids that have actually ended up being shooters, you know, the, the extreme violence we've experienced in our culture, are identify themselves as out of the mainstream, very different, uh, can't be popular, are teased a lot at school, who don't view school as a safe place, who don't feel they could ever fit or be a success, and what I think is most important, they don't feel they have any adult that they can talk to that will understand that dilemma. They feel alone. Well, I hate to interrupt there. We, we just uh, sound like we're getting rolling here. But we'll have everybody back next week. And, yes, uh, please come back. We'll uh, continue this discussion. Dr. Doan, Lisa Forster Doan, thank you both for coming by. Kent and I'll have a few final thoughts when we return. You're watching The Verdict with Mick Cornett and Kent Myers. I enrich our cultural landscape. I help define our quality of life. I am one of 4,000 artists in central Oklahoma who receive support from Allied Arts, this community's united arts organization. I am. I am. I am an Allied artist.
Think being a big brother means taking time out of your schedule to tutor a kid in algebra? Think again. To learn more about becoming a big brother or big sister, call 1-888-412-BIGS. Bringing out the best in each student. That is the simple goal and tradition of Heritage Hall. The focus on the individual shapes the educational experience at Heritage Hall. Each student benefits from small classes, able, dedicated teachers, a solid academic curriculum, and exceptional co-curricular programs of athletics, arts, community service, and other activities. Parental involvement, personalized counseling, and the development of responsibility, integrity, and love of learning. If you want education taught with pride, then you want Heritage Hall. We're back to wrap up another edition of The Verdict, and uh, Kent, sometimes it's frustrating because it, we feel like we're just getting into something, and we're scratching the surface, and time slips away on us, but I'm glad we're having these two back. I am, too. You know, when we try to plan these shows, we think, gosh, we'll have a show about this subject, and then yeah. we get into it, and we and say... And we'll cover it all. Yep. <laughs> we find out we can't, so we have two and sometimes three, and I'm not sure that two shows on this subject is anywhere near enough, but particularly, you and I need as much of this as we can have since we both have adolescents at home, That's both right. have 14 year olds at home. Uh, and I'm not so sure that they may not profit more by looking at this than <laughs> we will. But uh, for, for uh, most of our viewers, uh, our kids are all important. And uh, the Doan team, uh, Rob and Lisa Doan, have a lot to offer on how one uh, views and deals with the, the uh, difficulties of adolescence, what's normal adolescent behavior, and when does it cease to be normal and to become troublesome uh, and lead to potentially uh, felonious uh, behavior on the part of the, the, the kids. Uh, very difficult subject, but uh, they have started us out telling this week uh, the conditions that bring about that behavior. Uh, next week we're going to talk about what does the system do with the child that has crossed the line? What kind of corrective action is taken? And is it effective? Is it uh, rehabilitating the child? Or are we uh, making the problem worse? Well, let me thank our viewers for joining us and also invite you to tune into our website at theverdict.tv. You can uh, give us a suggestion about a topic you'd like to see us tackle. Thanks again also to our guests, Lisa Forster-Done and Dr. Robert Done. For Kent Myers, I'm Mick Cornett. We'll see you next time on The Verdict. <laughs>